Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with my top 20 books of 2022 so far. I have 11 non-historical and then 9 historical, so I'm gonna go with the contemporary, dark, mafia, all those first, and then the last 9 are gonna be my historicals. I wanted to do this because I did do the mid-year book freakout tag, but I have a lot I didn't talk about in that tag because that was about certain categories, and I did pull out like 6 of my favorites, but I don't think I mentioned a single historical in there, so I wanted to come on here and give give you just full-blown. These are all my favorites of the year so far. A little bit of overlap in that video, but I did talk about different books in that video as well, so check it out. But before we get to the video, I do want to thank the sponsor of this video, which is Ana Luisa Jewelry. I have been fortunate enough to work with Ana Luisa for over a year now, and you guys know I am literally obsessed with their jewelry. I have a lot of piercings in my ears. I have four in this year and three in this year, and I am obsessed with their earrings. I wear them constantly, and I'm super excited for the new earrings they sent me because one of my favorite earrings is their Suzanne earring and I've always had the gold pair and I literally will wear that pair every single day and pair it with a different earring in my first hoop. They just came out with Suzanne in silver and I am obsessed and then I have these adorable dangly earrings. I will get up close in a second but I also got this amazing heart necklace as well. I love their earrings and then necklaces are probably my second favorite from them. They have such affordable pieces starting at $39. Right now there's a huge sale going on for 10% off and I am just so in love with them as a company. They are carbon neutral. They care about the environment. They have very unique pieces I don't see anywhere else and I think that they are just the most fabulous company. Their pieces I literally wear every day and they hold up so well and so I will go ahead and show you a little bit of a close-up of the new pieces they sent me. So if you can see in my ear, let me pull these up so I can tell you the title. So we have the Suzanne in silver which is this one right here, the small hoop. I think it is perfect to pair with other pieces so I always have a Suzanne in whether it's my silver one that I just got which I love or in gold and I think it's really pretty and then the other pair is their Elise in silver with this like little teardrop. I love dangly earrings so much so I'm always wearing that and just like moving it around. I love these earrings and then it is the cutest it's a little bit shorter and what I love about their necklaces though is that they do have like three different loops so you can adjust the length of the chain as you'd like and it is a heart and I really it's very tiny it's very dainty and delicate I love smaller necklaces I'm not really like a huge statement necklace person and this you can also pair with like any other necklaces they have so I just love them so much and so make sure that you check out their sale I do have a code I'll pull pulled up for you. Definitely check out Annalisa. Treat yourself to some. I know I always gift my sister and my mom Anna Luisa pieces. They are both equally obsessed with them. My sister recently got her own pair of earrings and she loves them as well. They do sustainable jewelry. Their pieces start at $39 and you can get 10% off with my code lovebook10 which I'll put on the screen somewhere as well so you can check them out. Like I said I am obsessed with their jewelry and I will wear them literally every day and I love switching out like I said the big one and then of course my little one and it's just I love them. I love them and I can't scream about them enough. So thank you so much to them for sponsoring this video and wanting to work with me. They're one of my favorite companies to work with and I could not recommend them enough. Okay, so now we will get on to the books. I have a huge stack next to me. Should I go in order that I read them? I will go in order that I wrote them down. So we're going to do the non-historicals first. Of course, I put the first ones I read at the bottom. But the first one, so some of these I've been talking about like literally all year because I'm obsessed with them. But we have Still Beating by Jennifer Hartman. I've talked about this in like the past two two videos I've done and not counting my TBR. If you've been watching me at all this year, you know I'm obsessed with this. It's a very dark romance. I put it in my darkest books I've ever read video because the hero and heroine are kidnapped together. It is a lot, but they end up falling for each other. They're forced to watch each other go through things, but then they also are forced to do things with each other, but they do escape and then they have to deal with being the only two people that really understand each other, but he is engaged to her sister. So it is a very forbidden romance, but I'm obsessed. Obsessed with Jennifer Hartman. I had her on my channel this year as well. Definitely, I will link that interview down below. She is just an amazing person, and I love listening to her talk about her writing. So one of my favorites. Another one I talk about all the time is Waking Olivia by Elizabeth O'Rourke. I actually have two by this author on this list because she has blown me away with her writing. I was more connected to this one, though, because I do run. I ran club cross country in college. That's when I really got into running 
running and Olivia is a cross-country runner but she's like really really good way better than I could ever be she was really good at a d1 school but got kicked out because of her attitude and things she did and so she's now running for a d3 school and she still has an attitude but it's because of something that she went through so no she has a very traumatic dark past but she does sleep run to kind of try to escape her trauma so she'll show up to practice completely exhausted and the coach thinks that she's just slacking off it doesn't care and the coach is her love interest the coach is only like four or five years older than her it's really not that big of an age gap but it is a forbidden romance he does have a girlfriend so know that but I'm obsessed with this book. Another one I read at the beginning of the year is All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata. I love this book so much and I was not reading it last year because I was scared of the hype but I read it reading your favorite I believe books of 2021 and it blew me away. Our heroine has gotten out of a really really long relationship with someone and so she moves back to where her mother had disappeared and rents this garage but the guy who owns the garage didn't know that his son had put it up for rent and so he's really really angry. He's definitely a grump but it's a very slow burn romance. The heroine is just so just amazing and personable and just like a kind person. And I love that about her. And she really bonds with his son. And I loved, I loved Rhodes' character so much. He's just such a grump, but he cares so much. So I was obsessed with this book. Five out of five stars. Still can't forget about it. And I will say, like, as I'm reading these books, I'm like, oh, I really like it. But some of these, I just, like, grew to love over time. It's just, like, some books really stick with you more than others. So I feel like I don't know if I, like, raved about these books as much as I was reading them. But looking back, I'm like, which books am I still obsessed with? And those are the books that are on this list. So just wanted to put that out there. Because I know my feelings about books change over time. And I, like, feel like I don't remember how I felt reading it. But I remember now my feelings about that book if that makes sense I don't know it should be no surprise that I have two Sophie Lark books on this list and the first one is the air this one is the first one in the Kmaker series and it surprised me so much because I was nervous because I don't love love new at all books but this one just completely shocked me because our hero and heroine are best friends it's friends to lovers and they kind of grew up like as cousins but they're not actually related and so they've always been best friends they're going off to this college together which is like a mafia training college and they have like four different sets of of, like houses kind of like Harry Potter and it's like kind of like mafia Harry Potter is what it's like marketed as because they all have their different like section and the hero and heroine are going to school together they can't talk to anybody at home they really like cut off from the outside world and so they're at a school full of like mafia kids and someone enters a picture and tries to tear them apart and they really succeed for a while and it's very very frustrating that character gets a later book and I'm like I have no idea how Sophie is gonna redeem this character I'm nervous but I flew through this book. I know some people don't love it, but I was so intensely addicted to this book because of all the action that was happening. All of the grade levels have different games that they play. I think it's like three or four in this book and I just remember vividly the last game and I'm like this is nuts and I can't stop reading. I have to figure out how it's gonna end. So tons of action. Plot is so good. Romance is so good. I'm so excited to continue this series. Another book I will not stop talking about is Business Casual by Danielle Allen. I am obsessed with this book. I love Danielle Allen. I'm going to interview her on my channel in July, so I will go ahead and link down below the pre-scheduled live show for that if you guys are interested. I love her books, and this one's definitely my favorite so far. This is, well, I don't know. I still love Truth or Dare as well, but this is a office romance. Our heroine is a freelancer, and she gets hired, I believe, by this bank and meets a guy in the lobby. They completely hit it off when she's supposed to go to the interview. They exchange numbers. She goes interview and it's the guy that she got the number from and they are so intensely attracted to each other though that the hero is like you know you're not my employee yet because there's a non-fraternization clause where they can't be together because they work together and so they have a one-night stand but it's they cannot stop <laughs> they are, have not gotten each other out of their systems yet so they continue this affair and it's so good they're not that subtle about it because they can't keep their hands off of each other even at work but I love a good forbidden romance and a workplace romance I was obsessed with this another mafia romance I was obsessed with is Carnal Urges by JT Geisinger this heroine is probably one of my favorite heroines that I've read and she's so fun she literally gets kidnapped because she like started a mafia war in the previous book and she didn't really like the guy that started 
the mafia war so she gets kidnapped and she is like not reacting at all like someone who gets kidnapped should she's like well what are you gonna do now and like I'm not scared of you and I love her attitude so much and the hero is so taken aback but he starts falling for her and he's super touch her and you die vibes and falls so hard for her and I love how everybody loves her like even his men are smitten with her and it's just so fun and so if you want a heroine who definitely isn't the docile innocent mafia heroine we get a lot you have to pick this book up and the second Sophie Lark book I have is Broken Vow this one is my favorite of the series though I loved Bloody Heart so much but I love this one better this one is Raylan and Riona and we had Raylan in the first the previous book and he was hilarious I loved his character and him and Riona really butt heads because he really pushes her buttons on purpose she's a very hardened stoic lawyer and someone's trying to kill her and so her family is like we need someone to protect you and so that's where Raylan comes in it's a bodyguard romance they go to his farm to hide out and it is so cute so he's like a cowboy mercenary bodyguard he's literally amazing he's so funny this is grump sunshine where the heroine's the grump and the hero's the sunshine and it was so good I love the forced proximity I loved someone was still trying to kill her so they were trying to protect her and I like that suspense mixed in with the romance it was just amazing I could not recommend this enough then a surprise because this one has been super hyped and I actually got to interview this author on Cheyenne's channel from That Tell Book Girl and that is Praise by Sarah Kate. I got to meet Sarah Kate as well as signing. She is super sweet and this book though is a ex-boyfriend's dad romance and the hero owns a pleasure club for people to explore their desires and he thinks his new secretary is coming in and he usually has his secretaries do certain things and so the heroine comes to get her check from the hero because her ex-boyfriend owes her money and so she shows up and he is like oh good you're here on your knees and she's like excuse me he's like don't you want your money and she thinks she's talking about the check that her boyfriend owes her so she gets on her knees and it's an interesting experience they quickly realize it's a mistake but she is just drawn to him and what had happened and so she comes back he offers her a job and it is an ex-boyfriend's dad romance and I loved it so much I loved how protective he was of her she had the amazing family and a really awful dad and so she was trying to like protect her family from her dad and he shows up as well and I just like I really love this book. Everything about it was amazing. Then I have Second Semester by QB Tyler. Of course I have a QB Tyler on this list. She's one of my favorite authors. I actually interviewed her this year as well. I will link that down below. But this one is really short and it's in the Campus Tale series. But this is also a dad's best friend romance. So it's a super big age gap. Workplace. She gets an internship at his law firm. He's known for sleeping around a lot. Of course her dad is like hands off. I know you sleep around a lot. Like you can't be near her. But they fall for each other and fall really hard. And he has a teenage son and I just adored this book so much. It was so good, so fun, so hot. Kiwi Tyler brings a steam and I just loved every second of it. Then I have Parallel by Elizabeth O'Rourke. I recently read this and it is a time traveling romance, soulmates romance. Our heroine's been dreaming about this guy named Nick her entire life since she was little. She's like, Nick's my husband and her parents are like, you're not married to someone named Nick. So they get her some help and she finally stops dreaming and now she is engaged looking at wedding venues and she continues to dream about Nick every night and her boyfriend is like, who is this guy you're talking about? Well, I guess he's her fiance. And then she meets Nick in real life. He is her doctor and she knows everything about him and they're like, how do you know all these things about him? This doesn't make sense. He has dreamed of her but not as like vividly and they had to figure out why they're dreaming about each other and she apparently can time travel to in here. So there's a cliffhanger. I'm dying to read book two amazing. And the last one is a recent addition, but I was literally addicted to this story, so I can't not put it on here, and that is Honey Trap by Tate James. This one I'm waiting for the alternate covers to come out because Emily Winning does the covers for Tate James alternate covers, and I'm obsessed with her designs. She actually did do Elizabeth O'Rourke's covers as well, and I messaged Emily. I was like, are you coming out with alternate covers for this series because it's a new series, and she said yes, they're coming in, in a little bit, and so I'm waiting for those covers to buy this series, but this is a polyamorous, I think, because she has two love interests in the first one and I'm pretty sure she chooses both of them at by the end of the series but the one love interest they work for like an assassin group so she is an assassin she's a mercenary she takes jobs he also the one hero is an assassin but he's also like a techie person so he more so does like the tech jobs he's obsessed with her he stalks her tries to harm people who are into her and she likes to push his buttons and so she is given a job that's literally a suicide mission no one has succeeded in killing this guy and he will literally shoot you within a second like if he has 
has any doubt about your intentions, he will just get rid of you. And so no one's gotten close to killing him. So she decides to take the job. The one hero is really angry, but she does. And then she gets kidnapped by the guy she's trying to kill. And he doesn't trust her, but she has to take on this persona as like this innocent banker who's just trying to have fun on a weekend. And she keeps that role going because she's so talented and they even like try torturing her and she has to act like it hurts so much and in her mind she's like these guys are wimps like this is not harmful at all like my tolerance is so much higher you guys need to get better how you torture and it was so funny and she's falling for him and she is so in control the whole time but he thinks he's in control so it's kept her captive but she still has this other guy that she really likes and it is amazing. I think I like Kai better than Leon, but I've heard opinions change in book two, so I'm pretty sure she's with both though, but this was amazing. Now we have my historicals. The first one is Scoundrel of My Heart by Lorraine Heath. This is book one in the series. I absolutely adored The Duchess Hunt, which is book two. I think that's what it was called. That was one of my favorites last year. This one was so good as well. Best friend's brother, but she needs to get married to someone of high class in order to get an inheritance that she's dreamed of having. It's like this cottage that she's dreamed of having, but she needs to marry someone of high class. And so she knows she can never be with her best friend's brother, but they really, really like each other. And he's trying to open up this club and there's a bit of a time jump in here. She's actually courting the Duke or the Duke's courting her from book two and it is so good. I love when there are circumstances pulling people apart even though they really want to be together, especially like social class difference. So this one is amazing. Then I have Devil's Submission by Nicola Davidson. This one is a marriage and trouble romance. It revolves around a pleasure club. I did read all three in the series, but this one was my favorite. She has pretty much been like banished by her husband. She lives out in the country and he just ignores her. She finally decides she's gonna take control of her life and her marriage and get her husband back so she visits him learns what he needs in a marriage and in the bedroom and it was so good. Really recommend this. I'm so happy I discovered Nicola Davidson. I cannot wait to read more by her. Then I have The Lady Tempson Arrow, which is book three in this series, and it is by far my favorite. The hero and heroine had met when the heroine from book two, who is the hero's sister, ran away, and that's her friend, and so it's kind of like friends brother. Romance, similar to the first book that I talked about by Lorraine Heath, and in this one, they just really enjoy each other's company, but they both need a fiancé slash husband, wife, in order to get what they want out of society. The heroine's trying, I believe, to help struggling mothers and single mothers, and the hero wants to take over his father's company, but the father's like, you gotta get married, and he's like, excuse me, and so they decide to court one another in public in order to help each other's reputations, but they fall for each other, and the heroine is unable to have children, so it's a huge discussion in here. I absolutely love this one, adored it. They had such a sweet romance because they were already like really into each other at the beginning and I really enjoyed it. Then I had The Ride Goes Rogue by Joanna Shoup. She's always on my top list of the year. This one, our heroine, has spent the past few years believing she's engaged to this guy that their parents set up and the guy is like, I am never marrying you, what the heck? He's like, your father cheated my father out of so many things, I do not want anything to do with your family. And she is appalled. She's like, I have spent the last two or three years of my life thinking we're engaged. I could have gotten another match. Like, she is furious with him. And so then she's like, fine, I'd never marry you in the anyways. And she goes and she decides she's gonna live for herself. So she goes to this uh, scandalous party with her friend hooks up with someone and it's really good and he works in architecture which is really cool and she wants to open an art museum so really love this one. Then I have Dreamy of You by Lisa Kleypas. I have three Lisa Kleypas books on this list but this one they're all like up if you see up there so I uh, didn't grab them but Dreamy of You Everybody knows what this book is about. It's Derek Craven. I really love this book. I was definitely scared of the hype because everybody says that this is one of their favorites and I feel like it really did live up to the hype. So Sarah is a writer, so she puts herself in some precarious situations and that's how she meets Derek and Derek is a self-made man, but he has things that happened to his past that he really pushes people away because of those things, but I just loved how much they fell for each other. I love the kind of man Derek is and it's just so good. But I loved Then Came You, which is the first book in the series. So definitely read that and then come read this because Derek is best friends with the heroine in book one and I love their friendship so much and they do show up in this book. Then I have Tent Me at Twilight, which is a romance that is a marriage of convenience, which I didn't know, but the hero owns a hotel and the heroine is uh, one of the Hathaway siblings and so her family's staying at the hotel. It was hilarious how they met and then the hero sees her and he decides he wants her so he gets her he orchestrates their ruination so that they have to get married and so it goes on 
from there. She doesn't think it's ever going to be a marriage of love, but obviously they fall in love for each other. And I really love a hero who just goes after what he wants, especially if it's the heroine. And I really liked how he owned the hotel. That was a really unique hero in a historical. So I really love this one, but I loved the last book in the series, which is love in the afternoon. This is an epistolary romance. Our heroine is the kind of eccentric sibling. She loves animals and she's been writing under her friend's name to our hero and he thinks he's been falling in love with this woman who is not our heroine but he's been writing to our heroine. So he comes back from war and he meets the woman he thinks he's writing and he's like this is not the same person I've been writing to this whole time and then he sees our heroine and he's like well, I know you're annoying and I said mean things to you when we were young, but she really is the only one who gets him now because he's definitely in a different state after being away at war and going through everything he did. And he has a dog and the heroine does so well with his dog and I was obsessed. This is probably my favorite of the three Lisa Kleypas books that I'm talking about because it was just so sweet and so good and I just loved every second of it. Then we have The Marquest Makes His Move, which is Diana Quincy. I love the first book in the series and this one is so good as well. Our heroine's a cartographer. She makes maps. She kind of took over her father's business, but a woman can't do that and so she married her father's apprentice who takes credit for her maps because she's a woman and can't take credit for it. So our hero is angry because a map was made that she did him out of property. So he is trying to go undercover to see who did it and like get retaliation for them and so he is the footman for our heroine he like is supposed to wait on her and they end up falling for each other and he is still trying to figure out who cheated him out of his land if it was the heroine's husband but he's also growing closer with like the the staff and the servants even though he is high class as well he's a marquess and it was so cute how he would be like well my aunt had this extra stuff and so here it is for you guys and they're like what and they're like you have no idea what you're doing so they're very skeptical but they like really welcome him and I love that class overlap where he was able to see and really enjoy being with the servants even though he is of high class so I really love that and then the heroine is really falling for him but she is married so I had no idea how they're gonna get out of that but this is so good probably my favorite Diana Quincy I was obsessed and the last one I have is to covet a countess this one is book two in the series but it was my favorite our heroine is actually from India she's running away from a horrible situation with her uncle with her and her sister and so she shows up wanting to see her cousin who has gotten married to I think a duke or a, I don't remember she's gotten married to someone of high class in England and she is the heroine from book one and so she comes to try to stay with them they're not on their estate though so the heroine and her sister are trying to like go over the gate to try to get to the estate the hero is best friends from the hero from book one sees them and is like what are you doing and so she explains her situation and it's really funny how they meet and then they're always thrown together because the heroine is then taken in by her cousin and trying to come out in society and find a husband so it is so fun I really liked it the hero starts really falling for her and doesn't really want her to find a husband and something does make me really annoyed about his decisions at the end because there's a little bit of a twist and he did not side with the heroine and I was like you're being annoying but I still really enjoyed it I love the romance and I'm really excited that I discovered this author and those are my favorite romances that I've read so far in 2022 let me know if you've read any of these or what your favorites are whether it's a contemporary a dark a mafia or a historical I would love to hear thank you so much Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video make sure you check out their jewelry use my code which is in the description box down below check out their link get 10% off any of their gorgeous jewelry and I'm so excited to have these beautiful pieces as part of my collection so like I said check out them down below and that's all I have as always thank you so much for watching and have a good day bye